And now we're going to make a micropost model. Uh, you, you may recall from the demo app that uh, we made a micropost uh, scaffold that had made a, a controller and a model at the same time. And let's just take a look at uh, the data model we used there. Here's the basic model. It's a, a micropost table in the database, which corresponds to a micropost model. It's got an ID, which is an integer, a content a field, which is a string, and the user ID, which is the foreign key for, uh, for users, which is an integer. Remember, the reason that content is a string is because this is going to be a micropost. It's going to be short. But in general, if you're building a data model that has, uh, say, a blog content or a blog body or something like that, um, you want to use a text field in here. So let's uh, let's make this uh, make this model using Rails generate Rails generate model, and as in the case of the scaffolding, after giving it the name, in this case the singular version of micropost, we can put the data model at the command line. Uh, it's going to be content, which is a string, and the user ID, which is an integer. You may recall in the context of the uh, demo app, we didn't look at the migration, but by now we've uh, had a chance to see some migrations. So let's take a look at this create microposts migration, this guy here. So let's close these down. And in db migrate, let's look at this migration. So this is the micropost migration, and it creates a table micropost, do t for table, t.string content, t.integer user ID. And then t.timestamps, remember this creates the, the magic uh, created at and updated at columns, will actually be using the, uh, uh, the created at column in, in this uh, lesson. So far, we've just been ignoring them. But uh, we will actually put it to good use in this lesson. Before running this migration, there's one thing I want to do. Um, you may recall that we added a, an index to the, uh, to the user model. Let's take a look at that. Which one is it? Just going back. This is a... Oh, it's actually the second one. Well, let's just go all the way back. This is the uh, the user migration. And you can see here that it's pretty much the same as the one for, for microposts. But because of this, uh, this idea of an index, remember, if you're going to be finding uh, something by a particular column, if in, in other words, if you're going to do user.find by email, it's a lot faster to have an index on the email column. And in this case, if you think about what this uh, user ID column is going to be good for, uh, we're going to be pulling out all the microposts corresponding to a particular user ID. That sounds a lot like the kind of thing you want an index for. So we're going to add an index to this user ID column before running the migration. We're going to add index to microposts, micropost table on the user ID column. And this will make the, uh, the associations much more efficient. So we're done with this now. Let's close these guys down and run the migration. And let's uh, prepare the test database too. So let's take a look at this, uh, this micropost spec. We see here we've got spec models micropost spec. So let's look at that. Spec, let's just close these guys down. Spec models micropost spec. And right now it has, uh, has nothing in it. It's just a pending spec. So let's run our test suite and see if we're pending. We may have to restart something. OK, good. So we've got our pending spec. Now you may recall that the first step when dealing with a model is always to do the same thing, which is to define the accessible attributes. So let's take a look at app. Actually, we can just use a keyboard. This is a uh, control shift down arrow. So here's the micropost model. And let's just recall the user model. Remember, we've got this uh, after accessible line here. And we've, we've also got the schema information. This, we've got the data model here. So let's, uh, let's put that in. Let's annotate. So I'll annotate the, the micropost model as well. All right, so let's take a look at micropost. There we go. It's annotated ID, content, user ID, and then remember the magic columns that get created automatically. And now we need to define after accessible. This is particularly important in this case because by default, any user would be able to uh, uh, update the user ID column. And so you could assign 
a one user's micropost to another user. That would be really bad. And so you can guess, from, just from that description, that user ID should not be after accessible. And in fact, the only thing here that should be after accessible is uh, the content column. So let's do content. Here we go. So let's, uh, let's drop into the console and see how that works. Let's make a new micropost, micropost.new, and let's say content is foobar, and the user ID is one. So you can see here that we've got uh, content foobar here, user ID nil. And the reason it's nil is because you can't actually uh, use this this hash initialization, which is called mass assignment, to initialize the user ID. We'll see later on in this lesson how you, you do, in fact, set that user ID. Uh, we'll be doing it through the user association. So let's take a look at the initial user spec, or I guess this is the current user spec. The way we got started with, uh, with the user spec was to make uh, an attribute hash of a valid attributes, and then we just did user.create bang, which raises an exception if anything goes wrong. So let's, uh, let's take that same idea and just get started with our micropost spec. In this case, the attributes, well, let's just do, let's, let's see if we can start with content. This is just the naive way to, to get started. So let's say uh, Laura Mipsum and the, I, the user ID is one. Say, and I'm going to say it should create a new instance with valid attributes. And it's the same thing. We're going to do micropost dot create bang at at attributes. So if I save this, what do you think will happen? So it passes, but we've just seen that there's something really fishy about this because we should not be assigning this user ID uh, using a mass assignment, using this, this hash initialization. So the real way to do this is to m use the create bang method, not on the micropost model directly, but rather through the user association. And so the, the goal of this next section of the tutorial is to see how that works. So let's take a look at um, the association between our data models. We've got a couple diagrams to, to digest here. Now, you may recall the basic idea behind the associations from the demo app, but uh, it's been a while since we covered that, so let's review how this works. So here we've got an example of a, a single micropost and a single user, and we have the relationship that a micropost belongs to the user. And what that means in this context is that the user ID, the foreign key here, is the ID of this particular user. Conversely, a single user might have many microposts, in this case, a micropost with ID 3, ID 4, and ID 7. And the reason that uh, this user has all of those microposts is because of the user ID uh, column all, always being 1 in each of these cases. Now notice I've actually included a little bit of code here. You may not have uh, recognized it, but this micropost.user is the user that the micropost belongs to. And over here, when we say user.microposts, that's an array of these three microposts. So these two methods, micropost.user and user.micropost, are a hint that Rails adds some, uh, some extra functionality when we build an association. So let's take a look at a, a table of the kinds of things that get built. So the first two methods here, micropost.user and user.micropost, are the ones we just talked about. The first one returns the user object associated with the micropost. The second returns an array of the user's micropost. But we also get uh, several more methods, including user.micropost.create and user.micropost.create bang. In both cases, it takes the same kinds of arguments that create usually takes, uh, typically an, in an initialization hash. And then there's also user.micropost.build, which is a, essentially, uh, it's a lot like new. What it does is it returns a, a new micropost object, but all three of these arrange for the user ID foreign key to be equal to the ID of the user that the method is called on. So user.micropost.create automatically creates a micropost with that user's ID. And so let's write some tests for these ideas. 
So here in this test, instead of micropost.create, we're going to want to have a user associated with my, this micropost. So let's make a user. And then in this initialization hash, we don't want the user ID. We just want the, uh, the, the attributes hash to be the content. And then down here, we're going to say at user dot microposts dot create bang at attributes. And this failed because we don't have the association yet. We haven't done the belongs to or has many that you may remember from the, the demo app. But before we get onto that, I'm going to uh, add three more tests, actually two more tests, that are also going to uh, be made passing by, uh, by the association. So I'm going to describe the user associations. I'm going to say it should have a user attribute. That is to say that, well, we can see what, it, what that means. At micropost dot should respond to user. And it should have the right associated user, which means that at micropost dot user underscore ID should equal at user.id. And we can also say that at micropost.user should be the same as at user. Now, of course, neither of these will pass for at least two reasons. Uh, we don't have the associations, but we also don't, don't have a, an at micropost variable. Right now, that's just going to call it on nil. So let's put in a before each block at micropost. So let's see if you can guess, based on what we've done so far, what this will be. This is just going to be equal to at user dot microposts dot create of the attributes. We could use a create bang here too, but we've already tested that up here. So let's uh, save this, and uh, we should be red. Good. And now let's add some uh, association tests to the user model. So let's go to the user spec, and we're going to describe uh, the micropost associations. And let's uh, before each do uh, at user equals user dot create at attributes. <laughs> oh, I can see up here I did user dot create bang. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. And then let's say it should have a micro post attribute. So these sorts of tests are a good example of the kind of test that you don't necessarily need to write to get good test coverage, because they're just going to pass automatically as a result of how Rails does associations. But this is uh, it's sort of in the spirit of test-driven development. We're really specifying what these things should behave like. Um, even though it's unlikely that this will ever break, it's still nice to look at the code and, and see what's going on. This gives us a sense that, you know, that microposts should have users, and users should have microposts. So let's take a look at this. I should say microposts should belong to users. All right, now let's set up the associations. We'll have to save this, make sure we're still red. Good. And remember, that only ran the user spec. So if we wanted to rerun the whole test suite, we should have four uh, failing specs. Good. And now let's add the, uh, the association. So remember, micropost belongs to user. And user has many microposts. By the way, you might notice just the, the placement of these things. I, I like to, to have these associations uh, pretty high up in the model file just so I can see uh, what, what this model is all about. So in this case, I know this model has an accessor that's a password, it's got some accessible attributes. And it has many microposts. And then I typically put the validations uh, in the next sort of section of code. And then uh, any sort of callbacks I put in uh, before any method definitions. Uh, I think this is a fairly common way of organizing code, but you know, you're free to develop your own style. All right, so has many microposts belongs to user. At this point, all of these tests should be passing just based on these two changes. So let's click over here. It'll save automatically. And let's see if we're green. OK, we're not green. Undefined method micropost for user. User at user.micropost.create. So I made a typo here. At user.micropost.create. 
There we go. So now we're green. Let's just rerun the whole test suite. Great. And at this point, we have uh, working associations and the, 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 the diagram ideas, these, these guys. All of these methods now exist, and uh, both of these diagrams have been implemented in code. Now let's add a couple of refinements to the MicroPost model. Uh, one of the characteristics that we definitely want MicroPost to have is the notion of order. Um, that is to say, uh, MicroPosts, like blog posts, should be uh, retrieved from the database in reverse order of creation, so that uh, the top MicroPost, or the first MicroPost, should be the most recently created one. So let's add a test for that. Uh, it's going to be in the, the user spec here, because it's going to be a test on the MicroPost association. So let's do this. Let's say it should have the right microposts in the right order. Notice that this uh, user.should respond to microposts doesn't actually test that the microposts uh, association is um, actually an array, which is, which is what we want. We want user.microposts to be an array of all the microposts. So we'll test for that, and at the same time, we'll make sure that they're in the right order. So let's assume we're going to have uh, two microposts. I'm just going to call them um, MP2 and MP1 in, in that order. So at user.microposts should equal an array of at MP2 at MP1. These are these two microposts. And of course, we're going to have to create those uh, in the before each block. And we want to arrange for uh, at MP2 to be created more recently than at MP1. This is actually a little tricky because you can't just create them in a particular order. Um, they get created so quickly that uh, it, we need to uh, actually pass an explicit created at attribute in order to uh, guarantee that they're created in a certain order. So let's uh, see how we do that. I'm just going to give you a sense of it. It's at MP1. And now I'm going to assume the existence of a factory, not for users in this case, but for microposts. So factory micropost. And I'm going to tell it which user it is. This is going to be created for at user. And then I'm going to say it was created at, say, one day ago. Remember, this is a, one of these time helpers. You can look in the console. This is a time helper that Rails adds to uh, integers. I think it probably adds it to the fixed num class, but I'm not even, I'm not even sure. But in any case, we can calculate that uh, one day ago, and in this case was uh, Saturday, August 28. And let's take a look at, at this. Uh, we don't actually have a micropost factory right now, so we need to make one. And we'll see how this uh, options hash actually works. So let's look open our factories. So we can see up top here that we have factory.define user. Uh, this user symbol automatically causes Factory Girl to create uh, a simulation for the, the user class. In this case, we want factory dot define micropost do micropost, and then we're we're going to say micropost dot content. This is just an analogy with the the define uh, block here for users. Micropost dot content. Let's just say uh, foo bar, and then we want to uh, indicate the association. So Factory Girl has a really nice way of, uh, of doing this. We're just going to say micropost dot association user. So this automatically creates the idea that a micropost uh, belongs to user um, inside of these uh, Factory Girl objects. And what that lets us do is, in this initialization, pass a user symbol with a full user rather than setting the user ID. We could do this, we could do this, but it's nicer to be able to use just the user object. As we've seen before that Rails does this in lots of different contexts. And if we you know, link to a string and then an, a, a user variable, it automatically knows to create a link with that string as the content and um, the, the path to that user. So this is one of those uh, many cases where we have that sort of convention. And now notice here, we've got this created at one day ago. That's, that's going to work because the uh, the micropost model has a created at column, but it also works only because we're using Factory Girl. Um, norm, not only is created at not after accessible, right? It's not one of these guys, but it actually doesn't work in general. Uh, Rails 
uh, sets these created out and updated out columns automatically. And uh, ordinarily, if you're just using a like micropost.create, for example, you wouldn't be able to do this. But Factory Girl lets you set these attributes, which is really convenient um, for exactly this kind of uh, situation. So uh, in this case, we want to create a micropost at MP1. And now let's do a, another one at MP2. And let's create it. Remember, we want this to be more recent. So let's say this was created one hour ago. So now this user should have two microposts, and they should be in the order at MP2 and at MP1. So let's save this, and we should be red because we haven't actually done the implementation. The, the array part works, but, uh, but the ordering doesn't work. Actually, let's see which, which things are failing. Ah, no such factory microposts. So this part is failing. Th this guy is failing because it's, it doesn't know about the micropost factory. And I think when we add factories, we have to restart Spork. Let's do that. Okay, let's run auto test again. We should only have one failing test. There we go, only one example failed. And so now we want to get this ordering to work. And the way to do this is with what's called a default scope. Uh, the idea of scope is actually quite general in Rails. Um, it's a, a convenient way to uh, put methods on, on model objects to perform uh, particular searches. And we'll see in a, a concrete example of this uh, in the next lesson. But right now we're going to be using a default scope. So let's go to the micropost model. And we're going to say default scope. And we're going to say the order is, well, what, what order do we want? We want these microposts to be pulled out from the database in descending order of when they were created. That is to say, with the most recent first. And the way to do that is to pass a string in here that represents the column and then the, or the direction that we want that column uh, to be ordered. And so the way to do this is with created at. And then in SQL, the keyword for uh, descending order is DESC. Um, it's actually case insensitive, but conventionally, you put SQL commands in all caps. And it turns out that sometimes uh, there are some subtleties. If you're doing uh, more complicated queries, uh, the SQL uh, database will get confused about which created at column you want. Remember, everything in Rails, at least by default, has a created at column. We saw in the user model, we also have a created at column. So it's good practice to put the name of the table in here explicitly. Remember, a micropost model has a microposts table. So microposts dot created at descending. And if we save this, we might very well have a passing test suite. Those were actually only the micropost tests. Remember, this test was in the, uh, the user spec. So we need to rerun the whole test suite, see if we're green. And we are. Now, there's a second uh, characteristic of these microposts that, that we'd like to implement. Uh, remember that we gave uh, administrative users of our application the ability to destroy users. And if you destroy a user, uh, the microposts would be stranded in the database, right? Because they've got this, uh, they've got this user ID column. But if you destroyed a user with that user ID, now all these microposts are, uh, are unassociated to users. And so it would be really nice if we could destroy these microposts, the dependent microposts, uh, along with the users. So there's a nice way to do that in Rails, but let's first write a test. Let's say it should destroy associated microposts. So what we're going to do here is we're going to destroy the user. Remember, active record has a destroy method. We saw this in, in, the, uh, in the user's controller. Let's take a look at destroy. So here we did user.findParamsOfID.destroy. And actually, we can refactor this, can't we? This is uh, in the admin before filter. Let's, let's do this. Let's, do at, let's make this an at user, because we're finding it already. And we're, let's say current user question mark at user. And now we can just do at user.destroy. So this is paralleling what we're doing right now. Let's save this and make sure it, remember, it's only running the controller specs here. We should still be green. Good. And now let's go over here and say at user.destroy. And now for each of these microposts, um, we want to make sure that the, uh, the micropost does no longer exist in the database. We want to make sure that it actually gets destroyed along with the user. So let's say uh, 
but we know it's, it's these two microposts, at mp1 and at mp2. Let's just go th through each one. Dot each do micropost. And we want, we want to make sure that this micropost doesn't exist. And there are actually a couple ways to do this. Um, you may remember that if we find by ID and, it, and uh, something doesn't exist, then uh, it returns nil. So let's do micropost dot find by ID one. We don't currently have any microposts, so this should return nil. So in here we can do micropost dot find by ID at m uh, micropost dot ID. This should be nil. So let's save this. It won't be nil now. It should be red. Okay, so there's a really nice, uh, easy way to make this happen in Rails. In the user model, we're just going to say that it, a user has many microposts, and then we're going to say that when the microposts are dependent, they should be destroyed along with the user. So the way to do this is with dependent destroy. Just a, it's just a hash, uh, op, an options hash here to the has many method. Remember, these are just methods. We can put parentheses here, and it works just fine. It's not conventional, but it should work. So let's uh, get this to be green, and then I'll remove the parentheses. All right, so this is green. So in order to get a sense of, of what's going on here, let's run just one of these uh, tests. Let's, let's run um, this uh, should destroy associated micropost test at the command line. I'm going to tail the, uh, the uh, test log. So let's just put in some new lines so we can see where we are. And now I'm going to do our spec, spec, uh, what is this? Is the uh, models user spec dash e, and then should destroy associated microposts. So let's take a look at this at this log. You can see that uh, this insert here, this is the factory girl running. So this does the insertions, and then so here's what's, here's where the destroy happens. So it says delete from users where users.id equals one. And you can see right before those two, it does these two deletes for the microposts. So this is what the dependent destroy does. It arranges for all three deletions to happen um, at the same time. So I just want to note that there's a second way to do this. If you, uh, if you do micropost.find and then just the ID, uh, it raises an active record, record not found exception. And uh, the, way, the way to do this, the way to test for this, is to, to put this uh, call in the lambda. So we can do this, lambda do, and then we can say micropost.find micropost.id. So what's going to happen is this lambda is going to raise an exception. And then we can say that this, uh, this lambda block dot should raise error. And then the name of the error, in this case, I'm just going to paste in what I copied up there, active record, record not found. So let's save this and see if we're still green. And as is often the case in Rails, you can omit the uh, dot id. If you just do micropost.find of micropost, it will still work. So at this point, we are done with uh, all of the micropost uh, associations. And let's, uh, so let's make a commit. Say add dot git commit. Added a micropost model with user associations. Now let's add some validations to our micropost model. So we can go to the micropost spec. Actually, we're done with these. Let's close them down. In the micropost spec, let's make a describe block for the uh, validations. And first of all, let's uh, make a validation for the association, which is say it should have a user ID. We want these microposts to be uh, uh, to be associated with the user. So let's say micropost dot new of the attributes hash should not be valid. 
Remember, this attributes hash is just uh, the content. And we also want the, the uh, micropost to uh, reject non-blank content. So uh, we should say it should require a non-blank. I'm sorry, yeah, it should reject non-blank. So it should require non-blank content. Remember, the idea of blank is uh, slightly more general than empty. Uh, if it's like all spaces, if it's just white space, it should still be invalid. So now we're going to create it um, in the valid way through, through the association. Remember, at user.micropost.create uh, creates it. But we, are, we actually don't want to create it, or we don't need to create it in order to uh, test validity. Remember, we just did micropost.new. Uh, in this case, we're going to do at user.micropost.build. This is the, the analog of new. Remember, we saw this briefly in the association methods. So the last one here is user.micropost.build and then the arguments. So at user.micropost.build, and let's give it blank content. Content, and then just put in some white space. Should not be valid. And then say it should, uh, it should also reject content that's too long. Remember, these are microposts. So let's say it should reject long content. And just as a reminder, there's a nice simple way to get uh, uh, to get a long string, we can just say something like a times, well, it's going to be 141 because we're going to use the, the Twitter length for micropost of 140. So this is a, a nice way to do that. And so let's say at user dot microposts dot build content is, uh, let's say, the letter a times 141 should not be valid. So these, these should be read right now. Now, we've seen these validations before in different contexts, but it's always good to see them again. So let's say, after it belongs to user, validates content, and we want to validate the presence. This projects the non-blank content. And then let's have a length validation. And the maximum is 140. And let's also validate the user ID and say the presence is true in that case. If we save that, we should be green at this point. And let's rerun our test suite just to, to be paranoid. Great, and so that completes the uh, micropost validations. Let's save that. Commit it, git commit dash m micropost validations. And that completes the micropost model. So we are now ready to uh, start uh, creating and showing these micropost uh, through a web interface. So let's uh, let's get to that.